Shut up and sit down. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Geek Girls, a podcast about geeky things hosted by women. I'm September, also known as Nine of Twelve, and I'm here with my co-host, the Jen. Hi. And Chris slash Lunescence. Hello. And we have a guest grill today, Mandar. Say hi, Mandar. Hi, everybody. <laughs> so, um, Grills, what have you been up to recently? Warcraft movie. Again. <laughs> Yeah, so I went. I did go see it again. Um, I also loved it the second time. Um, did and you see it three D both times? I I can't see it three D either time. So it is a sad thing that three uh, D requires two functioning eyes to work. Uh, so with one of my eyes not functioning, I can't actually go to three D. So I'm terrified that. Someday all movies will be 3D and then I'll just have to have this weird magic eye screwed up experience. It's like basically it looks like a magic eye that's broken if I go to a 3D movie. Oh, weird. So it's not very effective. Ew. <laughs> I, I, I just did. went 2D for, because it gives me vertigo. <laughs> Jeez. Well, yeah, to be fair, some of those 3D movies are kind of intense um, from what I've heard, not from what I've experienced. <laughs> I wouldn't know. Um I've also been watching Rome on HBO since I got, I finally finished West Wing. Um, I had never seen West Wing all the way through and I just finished it. Um, that took me three years of Netflix occasionally to finish it. And I finally did. It was amazing. If you've never seen that show, go back and watch it. Even years later, it's still great. Um, but now I've started Rome. So I'm, I'm enjoying the historical sexy people. And fighting and <laughs> politicking and everything that comes with Roman culture. So that's been pretty awesome. Well, that's yeah. neat. I never heard of it, um, but I also don't have HBO. So that's the one with Titus, right? Uh, that is Titus. Like Christopher is... Titus? No, no, no. The character Titus is Titus. Oh, okay. I don't know. I know. I know that we've got Pompey and Gaius Julius Caesar. And there's and, only two seasons, oh, right? Oh, 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 oh. Um, you're talking about the soldier guy. Yes. Yeah, he's cool. And then and then the other soldier guy. Um, yeah, so obviously I've just started it because I know all the characters really well. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've been playing lots of Heroes of the Storm. I did finally get placed in the Paper League, so I'm Bronze 5. Woohoo. Um, I'm officially terrible at Heroes. Um, yeah, that's been fun. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. I've actually, it has been, the the Hero League has been very tough, um, but it, it is still fun. I'll keep playing it, except for the fact I tried to queue, and I'm one game away from promotion into silver, and I sat through two five-minute queues with no match, so I don't know what's going on. Oh, that's, Apparently, there's wow. nobody else in Bronze 5, so I don't know what that's about. How were, yeah. how were your placement matches? They were great, and then awful. So I won the first four and then lost every single one after that. Oh. And the ones that I lost after that were usually because somebody would ban or not ban. They would either ban somebody silly or not ban at all. Generally just frustrating. But, I mean, it wasn't terrible. Um, and then I have been trying out new heroes, though, so that's been exciting. I've been learning to play new heroes that I didn't know how to play before, so that's been that's been enjoyable. And then I did finally pick up my collector's edition of Overwatch, that I had forgot that I pre-ordered uh, months ago, and How the nice did you gentleman, the baby well, Winston, because I bought the Origin skin for PC, and I had owned an Xbox one at the time, so I pre-ordered a collector's edition of Overwatch for <laughs> the Xbox One, and the nice gentleman at GameStop called me after a month and said, "Hey, did you want to pick up your collector's edition?" And I was like, yeah, 
Yeah, I do. <laughs> oh, poor baby Winston and, was waiting for you. And then so I went nice. and I was like, oh my gosh, I get a baby Winston. And they were like, yeah. And I was like, oh, I can't come till Friday. Is that okay? And they were like, yeah. So I show up on Friday and I'm like, woo, give me my thing. I'm going to pull out my Soldier 70 stick statue. It's going to be awesome. And then I was like, oh, my baby Winston. And he was like, oh. And he went through the drawer and he went through every drawer. And I was so sad because he was like, no, I don't have any left. And oh, then he no. looked up and realized that they had one on the cash wrap that, like, belonged to the store that had been, like, <laughs> sitting on top of their monitor. And he was like, I suppose you can have our baby Winston if that's okay. And I was like, I'll give him a good home. <laughs> oh, that was nice of him. Did, they, did you get the poster? I didn't get the poster. They were out, which was sad. Um, but I did get the baby Winston. So I, I guess it's a, not, not a total loss. And then the Xbox One copy is going to go to my little brother because he still has an Xbox One. So, Excellent. but yeah, I just think it was funny. They were like, so do you want to come pick this up? And I'm like, yeah, I probably should go pick that up. That's an excellent <laughs> idea. I, I, I bought that. So I'm going to be more cautious about pre-ordering things and make sure I send myself some kind of a, like a calendar reminder or something. <laughs> so I don't forget that I've already purchased items Look before. Yeah, so, yeah. But, I'm, hey, at least they were nice enough to call me. They could have just sat on it for who knows how long. Yeah. But, yeah. You're pretty good about nice. stuff like that, though. Yeah, so I have a baby Winston now at my desk at work, which is cool. So, that's uh, what I've been up to. My son Ooh. ganked one. <laughs> oh, no. So, Loon, what have you been doing? I did see that you got a, a really good rank in Heroes of the Storm. Is it? I think it is. It ain't uh, bronze. I'm in bronze. Uh, yeah, I ended up, um, I did my 10 placement matches and I won, how do you divide 10 and a half? Five, right? Okay. So I won, <laughs> so I won six and lost five, I think, um, and got placed in silver rank three. And so I was just happy about that. I was like, I didn't know if I was going to get silver or bronze. I had no clue because there's never been a silver, bronze, gold ranking before now. So. Yeah, not in, uh heroes but it's interesting mixed reviews about the new system how long did that take you to do mm, 10 times a half an hour each time <laughs> so, so about five hours yeah and i did it over two days um yeah so you just binged some serious you know, <laughs> yeah i played serious Hearthstone. six games one one day and then for heroes. the next, yeah. And then I tried to play two ranked games in silver, won one, lost one, and then I quit. <laughs> <laughs> and then in Hearthstone, um, there's only about nine days left as of this recording. I've gotten up to rank 14 in both standard and wild. Um, I'm not pur purposefully trying to play in both, but checking out wild a little bit and then um, uh, test testing out my really 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 fun dragon paladin deck and then testing out the deck that i want to use for dills's popper comp comp popper competition this weekend and it was doing <laughs> really well with just basic and classic cards i'm like okay that sounds and, really fun. and i That's don't know if fun. you if you caught it um because dills and i had chatted briefly about it i think in our slack um but he meant to articulate that we can use wild cards well i don't think it really matters if it's basic or classic right the idea is is that you can use common cards but the common cards can come from it can come from the the wild right. stuff that's it doesn't eliminated. have to oh, be sure. all it doesn't have to be all standard is what is what she said right. and that's true which i think is awesome i think it's going to be really fun uh, we used to do tournaments like that in magic so i think it's going to be a super good time now what have you been running in standard i know i've been watching you chatter about different decks so i'm curious what your what your main deck you're running in standard is right now my goal is to get all of my heroes to golden because <laughs> just because i don't think i'll ever reach legendary anytime soon if the ever shinies are shiny yeah so sh so might as well use that as a goal to keep playing other than the fact that the, the, the that the game is fun to play in and of itself, um, but uh, so I haven't been wanting to play any of my current golden heroes. I have four of them, but the decks in the other ones that I don't have aren't work aren't helping me climb very much. So somebody had mentioned in Slack in Dill's Slack Patreon Slack channel um, something about the Yog and Load Hunter deck, and I already have a golden hunter. But I'm like, you know what? 
I keep hearing about that deck, and it sounds like fun. I'm going to try that. And it it rushed me all the way up to 14. I'm like, okay, this is fun. I like this deck. This is actually a lot of fun. <laughs> winning is totally fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, winning is totally fun in Hearthstone. That's true. And I'm using, um, I think it's Ceviche's y- Yog and Load version. Cool. That sounds super fun. I need to get into Hearthstone. I may, I'm going to get my, my deck back, or I'm going to get my card back this month, but I don't know if I'm actually going to care past that this month. I've been to Heroes of the Storm and Overwatch and Warcraft movie and too many Blizzard games to play. Are you playing in the tournament too, Jen? Oh, of course. What class did you pick? I think I'm playing a, pal- a Paladin. What Ooh. class did you pick, Loon, for the uh, Priest. Tournament? I went with shaman. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna. gonna I was gonna bet money that you were gonna go with shaman. It was kind of stupid. It was kind of on the fly, but it was like, hell with it. I'm doing it. <laughs> I might even yeah. put a crackle in there. <laughs> That's not a bad idea. Just, just, just for Garrett. Yeah, it's just I. I love the shaman too, and I know it can suck. <laughs> and even though it's been fine lately, and this restricts me with the common cards and such. Uh, with the new ones, I should be okay. So I also have been finally reading the uh, World of Warcraft Chronicle Volume 1 that Dark Horse Comics put out. I bought it a while ago, and I lent it to a friend of mine uh, that we go... We, we've been going to nerd movies together uh, with a group, and he doesn't play games. So I lent it to him <laughs> so he'd have some kind of background, and then... Hey, he never. Pretty sure he never read it when I uh, got it from him after I saw the movie. And I did want to read it before then, too. But it's okay. I at least had some history. Um, so I'm finally digging into that. And Father's Day Find, we went while Rob was at the con and found a graphic novel. My local comic book store was like, I know we didn't get you that other thing, but we got this other thing. And I thought you might like it, so I put it aside for you. And it's this hardcover. It was actually published by Legendary and Blizzard Entertainment. And it's Warcraft Bonds of Brotherhood. It's apparently the official prequel graphic novel to the major major motion picture. Cool. Yeah, the art is gorgeous. Um, I opened it up and I was like, there's a troll in here. (laughs) We didn't get any trolls in the movie. I know. That's the one thing I hope for for the next movie spoilers by the way spoilers there's there's no there's no trolls in the movie (laughs) i actually thought when i saw the preview when i watched the previews that garona was actually a troll because the female trolls in the game stand straight up not hunched over (laughs) yeah i oh garona all right we can't we can't we can't go down that road i'll be here for two hours we'll go back down that road so what do you think Uh, so mander mander mandar 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 (laughs) <laughs> what have you been up to in your in your little geeky sphere? Uh, uh, my soul has been slowly consumed by Dragon Age. Um, Which one? Inquisition. Nice. I uh, mm. I rage quit playing Origins because Alistair made me very angry. And, Why? Um, you know you can't like marry him if you're an elf. And oh I, yes, I know. And I was just like, I quit. <laughs> Burn in hell. <laughs> um and then i didn't play two and so i started playing uh inquisition and i'm on my third playthrough and that's uh nice i had combined like 240 hours of gaming dang okay so you would recommend getting inquisition because i haven't gotten it yet i would recommend getting inquisition because that game like I've I've seen a lot of BioWare's other games just from watching other people play them, but that's the only one that's basically eaten my life. Um, enough that my roommate was actually threatening me, like if I didn't stop playing it while she was around, because she was tired of looking at it. <laughs> and then we're also just can't look at it anymore. Yeah, and then we're also playing Dragon Age Tabletop. So that's also Ooh. eating my life. I'll literally be sitting there playing Dragon Age Inquisition while also playing Dragon Age Tabletop. So I think I wow. might actually have a problem at this point. 
<laughs> I mean, there are worse problems to have. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hookers and blow, Dragon Age tabletop while playing Dragon Age. I mean, it's a good I, analogy. It's, it's like the right snorting place. the cocaine of Dragon Age off of the corpse of dragons. You know? <laughs> <laughs> That's basically. <laughs> It's a pretty baller okay. move. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Oh, that's Actually, fantastic. okay. If there was a Dragon Age MMO, would you guys and they, you know, they did a good job. Would you guys be interested in playing something like that? Because I, I know have I too would. many Blizzard games. <laughs> I like. I I get so mad. I used to always be like, oh, I always play like one or two games outside of Blizzard games because you know Blizzard doesn't have a blank or a blank. Well, now Blizzard has an everything. So I literally do not have time to open my steam and do anything except for play things out of my battle net launcher it's so bad <laughs> yeah i saw feria was free this weekend and i got it all loaded up and i never got the time to play just other things kept happening so yeah i have to make myself play some other games as well now that we're caught up it's time for the geek grapevine So we have news about a new Tesla model, Jen. Well, it's you want to tell us about this great thing? So it's actually not the new. So it is just the Tesla Model S is apparently okay. So it's 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 unclear whether or not it actually was completely floating, but apparently there is video of a driver who is driving a Model S um, Tesla, and in a pinch. He got stuck in floodwaters in a tunnel on, like, a major road. And there the video shows, and there's argument whether or not it was completely floating or not, but essentially the, the car didn't go down. So there's theory that you could technically mod your Tesla Model S if you wanted to and make it actually seafaring, I guess, <laughs> because of the fact that, like, the battery compartment is completely sealed. So fascinating. Apparently, apparently, Teslas are way cooler than we thought and might actually be on water. Weird. So maybe the next James Bond, James Bond will have a Tesla. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. Like, but the video is actually really interesting. So I'll make sure I include a link this time for real. This time, the first time, I will include the link. And um, <laughs> yeah, and you can watch it because it's definitely up to interpretation. I do think it is actually floating at one point, which is really interesting to see a car that's floating and right on. yeah anyway ridiculousness I, I do i do like the first comment that's on the article oh which one uh from the guy mike what does it say yeah read it uh is it, <laughs> <laughs> i'm like which one yeah. this is good audio just go ahead and read it yourself uh this <laughs> okay so mike reading. says <laughs> This honestly just seems like common sense to anyone that understands how a combust combustion engine works. When a combustion engine is submerged, you're screwed because for combustion, you need detonation. For detonation, you need air. So effectively, combustion en engines suffocate when submerged. Since electric vehicles have no such requirement for air intake, it makes sense that they could just keep running underwater exactly the same as they would above it. Oh, see, that guy's That's smart. Fascinating. Thanks, random internet guy Mike with no profile picture. Right? <laughs> All right. That's awesome. So, yeah, I would like one now. For and they're only $80,000, so, I mean, I'll obviously get one eventually. Oh, yeah, piece For of cake. <laughs> For we need What we need is the best patron ever. That's true. Yeah, we just need a few. <laughs> so he can get us all Teslas for science. We just need a few. Uh, one really, really wealthy patron or 100,000 not so wealthy. <laughs> <laughs> So that we can all drive into a lake. That's right. And test whether or not our Teslas will float. Hooray. All right. This is ridiculous. Okay. So other news in the retro gaming scene. You may have a lot of money sitting in your closet. Yes. This is hilarious. So this article is great. So apparently it compiles some old school games that are selling for ridiculous money. And like one of them I was like, okay. The Flintstones, Surprise at Dinosaur Peak for NES, 650 bucks. I was like, eh, okay. And then you look at, like, this one. Stadium Events U version 
for NES, $7,500 for a game from 1987. Uh, and then uh, what were some of the other really good ones on here? There was Magical Chase. It's funny because I remember actually playing a couple of them. Um, this Eli's Ladder game looks like Yeah, garbage. they all are so terrible looking. And like Little Samson, <laughs> 920 bucks for a Little Samson. That was a really terrible game that uh, was not very well played because Mega Man and Adventure Island were around at the same time, so nobody cared about Little Samson. But there you go. If you have a copy of it, 920 bucks right now. Uh, I don't know. That's crazy. Oh, yeah, the Magical Chase, by the way, for was $4,075 for a 19, from a game from 1993. That's crazy. Oh, yeah, Air Raid oh, from Atari. Boy. You might remember that one. That one's twenty eight hundred. Uh, That's the UFO Invader game. I yeah, I know, much. right? I'm just thinking. I really <laughs> wish that I, you know, probably. I think I remember playing a couple of those games and being like, "Oh, that's dumb." And <laughs> now I'm like, "Well, if only I had a terrible taste in video games, I'd be, I'd be wealthy now." Hooray! <laughs> well, I understand the appeal of the older style of game. I mean, we have on the Wii. We have a Wii, and we got all the old retro. We have, like, all the old Marios and stuff, and Ninja Guy Dan, and <laughs> the games that aren't good by today's standards. But, man, my kids love those things. They That's play true. them more than they I think there was, ones. like, this thing. I can't remember where I saw it, and I have to dig it up. But there was this thing about how to convert your Android phone into a Game Boy Color. Like, you snap on this thing, and so you only use, like, half your screen, and then it actually has a cartridge holder where you can put the old cartridges for Game Boy Color in it. And I'm like, <laughs> this is amazing. I would totally buy that. And then I'm like, oh, crap, I sold all my Game Boy Color games some time ago. Why did I do that? <laughs> bad hoarder, bad hoarder. <laughs> no. Um, and I know they don't go for as much money but sometimes the old consoles oh, yeah. themselves like the really old like the ataris that just didn't even have cartridges um i know people that buy those because they use them for oh yeah no it's uh, true music they have friends who do noise and stuff and you see them at these sound festivals doing really cool yeah. stuff and i think the there was i mean there's been like some atari <laughs> systems that have i've i remember seeing that have sold for like 30 grand so i mean i'm not surprised um there's sometimes even more but yeah i just thought that was interesting to kind of go back and look at some oh yeah here's another one back joey for sega genesis one thousand nine hundred and fifty dollars and i like the description here before the Wii fit tried to get tubby gamers off the couch there was sega's heartbeat personal trainer a rare variation of the sega genesis console <laughs> which was the heartbeat outback joey personal trainer so ridiculous <laughs> I, I gotta wonder if that's. Yeah, I'm. Did you I just hop know. around? A it lot? was just. It went with games, and I don't know. there was like different. Uh, it says it incorporated so movement-based like controls kangaroo? instead of the usual gamepad. I don't. I don't know. Now I'm curious, but I don't remember ever hearing about it. But yeah. If okay. You had so it, if anybody I, out there played either. Outback Joey, <laughs> give yeah, us a call. Okay. Contact us. Give us the scoop on that weirdness. Or watch your. <laughs> Watched your parents embarrass yeah, themselves absolutely. trying to play Outback Joey. Lots of that. So yes, good stuff. <laughs> yeah, if I could find a video, and if there are videos, that would be fantastic. Yeah, oh my gosh, that's on, on beta or something. So yeah, so that was a little a little fun thing I dug out this week. I think um, I I have been busy busy bee this week, so didn't dig any other fun articles out this week. But I thought those were both terribly humorous. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. It's very interesting. I didn't find news that I hadn't heard covered 15 times already, so good work. <laughs> now, for our main discussion topic today, uh, we intended to talk about the resurgence of tabletop gaming. Uh, in my research and talking to a lot of people, I question whether it is actually a resurgence, but we can get into that later. Um, and this is part of why we had Mandar, Mandar with us today. So let's let her start. What kind of tabletop games, do, well, other than we know Dragon Age right now, <laughs> are you really into and how long have you been playing and that sort of thing? Well, the first tabletop game I ever played was uh, 3.5 D&D &D, um, back when I was like 18 years old. And although like the game didn't last very long, um, it was 
really enjoyable. And then once I started dating my current boyfriend, um, he slowly, you know, dragged me down into the cesspit of tabletop gaming. And um, we started playing. Um, the first thing we ever played was tabletop werewolf the apocalypse, which Jen will be like, yes, tabletop oh, yeah, <laughs> werewolf the apocalypse. Um, but nowadays, nowadays, it's just like Pathfinder, Pathfinder, Pathfinder. And when, some some Warhammer 40k. When you first were introduced to the D&D, where was it? Um, I was actually introduced by a friend of mine from high school, her boyfriend slash fiance. Um, he introduced her to the game. She was playing with his friends and him, and then she decided to run her own game. And that was the first time we played, and... um. Like, looking back on it now, I'm like, we were not playing that game correctly at all. But it really doesn't matter. I mean, the rules in every tabletop LARP game will say the same thing in the introductory chapter. It's like, these rules are here to help you run the game, but they're not here to make it be fun. You know? That's the yeah, part I like to quote back rough. at. The I mean, rules I, I know stuff <laughs> she and I can both yeah. relate. We know some of the same LARPers that we've both story told before where we're just like... Sometimes you just have to be quiet and accept, well, and a it's, LARP? it's special. That's yes. intolerable. <laughs> I mean, it's bad enough in your average tabletop game. Well, and but it's in also, a LARP, like, yeah, what a way yeah, to exactly. wreck the that's flow. The, that's, that's the oh, hardest God. part. But the, it's the same thing happens in tabletop. <laughs> I mean, when I ran that game recently, where I was just like, really? Like, why are you getting so particular? Yeah, I had you roll eight dice this time. And I gave you this difficulty. It's different this time for reasons I'm not going to tell you because I'm a storyteller. So shh. Because I know things you don't know, dirty peon. Now be quiet. Right? That's basically how that goes. <laughs> it's like, stop questioning God. You're going to get hurt. <laughs> oh, a pit trap. Not so worried suddenly. about that other thing now, are you? Right? Everyone <laughs> dies. <laughs> are you? It's like... You'd be the DM version of that teacher that's like, either you tell me who did this or everybody gets extra homework. Either you be quiet or the whole party dies and has to pay for a res. (laughs) You have to pay for the reses. Now, I had thought when we first talked about talking about tabletop that it had really had this resurgence. I mean, my son's tabletop club at NC State has grown quickly. Um... I guess it might be partly because of, you know, who's caretaking it, doing what they're supposed to. Um, But I thought, oh, maybe it's just, you know, more popular now because now Geek's cool. And it wasn't when I played. But, I mean, other than a brief uh, game that when my neighbors bought the first D&D in the 70s, because I'm old, um, I didn't play again until I was in high school. And then... A lot more in college once, you know, I could do things like go to the game shop. And I did go to visit him recently and ended up hanging out with a whole bunch of his friends. So I was asking him, like, did your parents game? None of them. My son was the odd one out. None of the other parents gamed. They all found it through a friend in high school or college. It kind of like Mander did and have been doing it ever since. Um, I think I I may have perceived it as a resurgence. Because when I was raising kids and having a house and a life and and marriage and then you move and you don't have your gaming group anymore meeting every week, I mean, I just had a big gap. And I know a lot of other people from when we stream our D&D games are like, oh, I miss D&D. And it's all these, you know, middle-aged folks who are like that used to and stopped. So I don't think it ever well, went away just like, because we did what is seen, what it seems to be. I do feel like because it's okay to be a geek, it's okay to be a nerd, it's okay to have all this, have these fun hobbies and that people are like more open about it definitely. But I just noticed like I talk to people randomly and they're like, oh yeah, whatever. I'm like, oh, I have really nerdy hobbies. They're like, oh yeah. And I was like, yeah, I play tabletop games and stuff. Um, and they're like, oh yeah, I have a game with my buddies who play like every other Monday. And I'm just like, like, and if from somebody that you're like, really? Like, you randomly uh, go play, like, D&D with your, or Pathfinder with your buddies? I do feel like it has become something that's just, like, an accepted hobby. It's not just these, the weirdos in the basement, you know? I mean, for me, 
Oh, absolutely. Like for me, I got started. Yeah, people I don't definitely how talk about it Spencer more. <laughs> so I'll have to find out that next. But for me, I lived in the middle of nowhere. And so when I was younger, it, you know, we it was a drive 45 minutes to get to my friend's house. And so I'd be there for the whole weekend. And that's what we would do over the weekend. There was nothing else to do. Everything was closed. We lived in the middle of nowhere. So we would, we would bust out a tabletop game and we'd play a campaign for a weekend. We'd play a continuing story. Sometimes we'd spend two and a half days making characters that we never actually successfully played. You know, those are things that happen all the time. Uh, but that's how I got hooked Woo. into it. And then in college, I didn't really get a chance to. But now I've been, you know, the last couple of years, I've always had access to a LARP or a tabletop one way or another. Um, and I, I think it is just because it's more accepted and it's less, you know, hidden in the hidden away in the basements and embarrassing to talk about. Now, Loon, how did you get started with tabletopping? I don't remember how you first started. Uh, well, also on on the tail end of that, I think, you know, all publicity, whether or not it's good or bad, is good pl- pub- publicity, right? I think uh, the, the, the big hoopla that happened with Hobby Lobby may have also helped push, um, like, tabletop gamings and board games and stuff like that even more into the mainstream um, just because it was such a hot topic for there for a while. I I mean, I I do think, I don't know, it's hard because it's like some of it is just so much perception. And I think that just the change perception of geek culture in general is what has made it like completely more. I, I mean, I just think about some of the people that, like, Mander, I'll give an example. Like, you ran an all-girl game and we had some girls there that had never really gamed before. A couple of them, and like that was the thing yeah. is that just like it was okay. They were they were yeah. like oh they were you could tell they were a little bit nervous because they were like oh I don't know I don't know exactly what I'm doing, but they still came and it was like it was like a girl get together that was very girly in some ways. I mean we all brought it was like a what's the word I'm thinking of a potluck. Yeah, we did a potluck style. Mm-hmm. So everybody brought like something. Somebody brought drinks and yeah. um and then we all brought potluck food items so that we could hang out as like a little get together and then we also were playing pathfinder at the same time (laughs) so yeah we're gonna play pathfinder (laughs) yeah and i do remember having all my uh D &D books and fantasy books dumped on my bed by someone who you know i know that doesn't happen anymore now (laughs) back in the 80s so (laughs) does it uh, oh, yes, it does. Uh, <laughs> I, I got kidding. investigated by kidding? social services a few months ago Are you kidding because me? a school counselor said Ugh. we played D and D. I kid you not. Yeah, I mean, my, for, my for, ex- for, it was the best part was the the one who showed up to investigate. Not only was like, wow, okay, so this is ridiculous because they're saying that you you are, you're a Wicca and you play D and D. And I was like, yeah, well. We read Harry Potter too, you know, and the social worker was wearing a Ravenclaw lanyard. <laughs> At least it wasn't a Hufflepuff, so, then you know you're. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the school counselor, wow. I, I believe, got a little talking to about what is not a freaking issue. I wish that that was And uh, let alone the religious discrimination that uh, I, I took to the principal of the school and was like, uh, no, don't. I'll call the ACLU. Yeah, I was going to so, say, you're in politics. You're not a good person to, like, talk to about and threatening, like, yeah, basic you, you basic girl, civil so, rights. Uh, <laughs> Hello. I, I mean, I but grew up still here. Happening, is the point. I grew up here in California. My parents were still kind of like, what are you doing? No, what? I mean, that's doing? true. My dad used to always go, are you going to go play your devil game? I guess true. I guess he used to say that, but I would never really take it seriously. <laughs> I was just like, I would always argue. Of course, this was LARPing, but I mean, it's similar. It's in the same vein. And he would be like, you had to go. It's much closer. Like, you going to go play your devil game. <laughs> and I was like, hey, you know what? Honestly, dad, it's cheaper than a movie. I get to make up the story myself and I'm not out like doing drugs and I don't know. Not that, I mean, I I use that as an example a lot, I guess, but I mean, apologies to people who that's your lifestyle, but I mean, the point is, is that I'm being safe. I'm doing something that's fun. There's nobody being harmed in it. I mean, for the most part. And, uh, you know, it's cheaper than a movie. Like that was always my argument, but I guess he did always make comments about that. And he was more of a cool guy when he was in high school. Like he was like a, a, a (laughs) yeah, my ex-parents, in law, cool they used to think that um, World of Warcraft was witchcraft. So, well, yeah, didn't you know that da- DPS is is death per 
is d- deaths per second. Oh. Do you remember that guy that or that uh, <laughs> was it a woman? The woman who played the rogue, uh, the wo- World of Warcraft rogue player who uh, ran for a seat in the I think was a representative oh, yeah, in Maine and she was a rogue she played World of Warcraft and they found it and they were like she plays World of Warcraft where they use such phrases as DPS which stands for deaths per <laughs> second and it was like and it was they like they pulled oh her forum God. posts where she was talking about like oh yeah my DPS is much better now that I switched to this spec and they're like remember DPS stands for deaths no i remember this and then she was like she went um on the record as basically being like what is wrong with you people (laughs) everybody does this now it's completely okay it was such a hoopla so see i think that that's probably where some of the resurgence feeling comes from is like maybe it is just more um accepted but i also think that some of the tools like skype and where skype has gotten to i've definitely seen more players or more people playing games because they can connect to their friends playing games in different ways now where they couldn't before like i i know like roll 20 their, their site too yeah. and 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 then a yeah, lot of I skype games the birds, too. and even though we've met people that would love to game with us i mean we live 50 miles from all our friends uh, at least. <laughs> and so we're playing D&D online and we're using, we were using Roll20, but now we're using Fantasy Grounds. And uh, we were using Skype, but now we're using Discord because it's more reliable. But we ended up getting a group with, I mean, we have somebody in England and somebody in Ireland and Chris in our game and the out in the Midwest. I'm in North Carolina. Uh, when we first started, uh, we had a different... DM uh, Michelle from Prince Edward Island, which is interesting because he's I, we we met him online in WoW, but he is from where my husband was born. <laughs> so it's a strange coincidence, but yeah, we're using all online tools to get together virtually on Sunday nights, and it's it's great to have because we just don't have people to sit down and play games with very often. Yeah, and I think that's actually part of the popularity of tabletop gaming these days because when i think about it you know when i was a kid we used to spend a lot of our time basically playing pretend but i don't think that's as common as it used to be so you get these kids who kind of grew up without this experience of getting together with a bunch of people and basically just making stuff up and once they get introduced to it it's like crack they're just like wait you mean i can entertain myself and a bunch of people and have fun and not have a bunch of awkward conversations with people about stuff i don't really care about yeah you can do something fun. yeah it's <laughs> interesting we've had some people who have never played uh rpgs before and they get really into the system and they you know the rules and and then we start gabbing and have a session that's mostly rp and they really really love that or they don't but it's really interesting to watch the process <laughs> as they learn how this game works because the tabletop RPGs are just a completely different thing than anything else. Yeah, and uh, getting comfortable enough to actually RP with people is a process in and of itself. I mean, it's easy to learn the system and just roll dice, but it's difficult to disengage your own personality from another person, from like disengage your own personality and implement this other one in a way that feels natural and then have interactions with these other imaginary people and you just switch back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and it's like this weird social dynamic on two levels because you're playing these people on one level and then on this other level you're interacting with your friends and i think it kind of fulfills a very a very specific social need in people to kind of have that interaction. And I had that for so many years with a regular group um, when I was younger, per, in person, you know, kind of a potluck situation, like Jen said. I am, although this brings to mind the virtual environment that we have to play these games in, kind of opens up for a whole new group of people that wouldn't go to a game shop or doesn't have a social core of friends that they can, you know, start something like that up with that maybe they always wanted to play, you can find people 
online and have that, that if you have like social anxiety or whatever, still be able to step in and use it as a, as a tool the way that MMOs have helped a lot of people with social anxiety be able to form friendships and, and grow. Oh, and the things that, that I've way. learned from yeah, tabletopping and, and LARPing have turned me into one Yeah, no, it really does adult, help, let me especially tell you. like if you have social anxiety issues because it gives you like almost a uh, a mask you can wear to interact with people in a way where you feel safe, but you also can basically practice aspects of your personality that you've never really practiced. And then slowly over time, you begin to trust these people as the people that they are. And then you become friends that way instead of doing it the other way around, which for some people is really kind of necessary. They don't really trust other people that way very easily. I can't tell you how many people that I've LARPed with whose real names I didn't know until like a year after I'd met them. <laughs> yeah, that can be a great experience. And you look at personality archetypes that games have when you're making your character, and I think it can let you try things out, discover who you yeah. are. Very similar to being in like a raid group in WoW as well. I think you learn you learn a lot of, of neat life skills organization and how to deal with people and personal different personalities and stuff like that conflict resolu resolution things like that yeah guiding i like love oh sorry go ahead i say i love that that's actually starting to show up on resumes as a, a valid thing to cite like running a guild it is valid it's like it's nice. difficult to hold eight people on a single task over hours of oh, time exactly. and then be able to keep them focused i mean and and herd the cats yeah i mean absolutely or or try to create a story that's satisfying the fact that one of your players needs to be the magical most amazing magical snowflake spell trucking magic magic, magic, magic magic perfect person and then you've got somebody else who wants to have some kind of like emotional traumatic but over at the end redemptive story and all of this and then you've got people that you know they just all want different things and you're trying to okay how can i satisfy all these players with these different needs and and still have a cohesive yeah. story that's a skill that is a a skill and especially when you're like having to deal with that and the rules too it's like whew, okay how do i make this happen with this set of guidelines what guidelines should I just not use? Hmm. Who's going to get in the three hour long exactly. argument with me if I well... don't use them? <laughs> exactly. <Right? laughs> oh, yeah, that's the other one I totally forgot. I, how do I solve it? I kick it. I push it down. I hit it with my sword. I hit it with my hammer. I punch it open. You come to a door. I punch it down. Okay, you could have just opened yeah. the door. All right, Don't that's fine. Don't knock whatever. the dwarven disabled device. <laughs> Don't sit in that chair, Trebizzle. Right? Holy cow. <laughs> we we have a player in our current D&D uh, &D that just has to do the thing. Whatever the thing is, he's going to go do the thing. No matter what else we're doing at the time. But there's a thing over there. I'm going to go do that and, and just triggers. And, and then he's like, you should thank me because it was getting boring. Like, no, you went and did that when we were already in the middle of a fight. <laughs> it's about timing, timing and teamwork. Heaven forbid. Oh yeah. No, some people just, <laughs> some people are very difficult to deal with. We had, um, we're playing one of the adventure paths from Pathfinder right now. And one of the people that we were playing with in the beginning for some reason, just didn't understand why we were upset that he kept attacking our characters, trying to get in with the guys who were obviously the bad guys. And our DM actually thought he was, like, cleverly, cleverly, cleverly masking himself to one day, like, turn around to the bad guys and be like, I was really a good guy the whole time. No, no, he wasn't. We actually ended up having to kill him, and He's then he just never oblivious. came back. He was just that he was, and it, it, he was playing the character he made. It's just why would you make like why that do you have character? to play that character? Like there's so many times where I'm just as a, as a storyteller. Now this is more relevant to my LARPing experience running games because well, I just had a lot of really awesome players, and there are those times where I'm just like, why can't you just play a friggin' bruja that uses a bat and hits people and guns? 
<laughs> like, why no, do you I have to, to be I the to Bruja be with eight arrangements that probably should just be a Malkavian that thinks that he licks stamps in a pretend video game <laughs> reality every night instead of just being a Bruja that just hits stuff? I don't know. I just feel like sometimes I'm just like, play play something straightforward. I guess that's one of the things that I really like about a system. Like, just getting into, t- I, I know I'm kind of jumping the gun here, but getting into t- what I like about certain tabletop games, one of the things that I really enjoy is when the classes have very specific definition and it gives different roles so that you have that ability to where not everybody can do the same thing. So you have to rely on other people and then other people everybody gets to do something that way. You don't have that one person that's sitting there going like, well, let me know when, uh, you know, you're not going to have a better role every time for the sales that we all have. Um, it is nice yeah. to have. I know that, just that we were looking at rules not long ago about alignment changes in D and D because they used to have a built in, you know, you could, Say, all right, listen, you have been acting out of character for this and this and this and this, and your alignment is not correct, and you need to change that. And there would be some penalties for changing alignment. Um, And, of course, there are benefits depending on the story that's going on. But we found that they had removed that, uh, that there was any kind of (laughs) penalty for acting completely out of the character that you rolled, you handled handed to the DM and they built a story around and I am kind of disappointed. Like why in the heck would they do that? Oh, in Pathfinder, they still have the alignment system and they've actually um, expanded. Right, but do they have penalties when you change? Well, that's really up to DM discretion and it really depends. Like there are classes where if your alignment does change, it can take your powers away. Um, Paladin, of course, because they are the worst. Um, Druid, <laughs> And uh, Druid, Inquisitor, and Cleric could also, um, not necessarily, you have to actually shift quite a bit for those to do it. Monk, if you fall out of the lawful category. Druid, if you fall out of the neutral category. Paladin, if you fall out of the lawful good category, or if you basically work with people who are not good, it can also have an effect. But, I mean, a lot of the classes, it, it's just not intrinsic to their character. So, yeah, that's how we felt about it. And when we went looking, we didn't have any recourse. We're playing uh, five. Oh, so, I don't like five very much. Yeah, there's a lot of things I'm not crazy about it either. I, I'm playing a cleric currently, and like the magic systems being... Although Pathfinder has the same downfall, where every magic user that it works completely differently Yeet. and I, I get frustrated by that. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I don't think that every magic user works differently in, in Pathfinder, but I mean, the way that the char- the character classes, other powers interact with its magical capabilities in terms of actual play that can have a huge effect on it and that can in fact be very frustrating especially if you've played one class for like maybe 10 12 13 levels and then you switch to another magical class that's completely different and then you're just like i'm looking at this book and it's upside down and backwards and i have no idea what to do now really that is so yeah what it feels like i was a bard and now i'm playing a cleric and i'm just like whoa okay. you're like i'm so much less cool <laughs> cleric. See, we just uh, cleric. <laughs> but I can hit things with a hammer sometimes if I am ever not just. But we recently had our game, time. our our game that we were running, our Pathfinder game, kind of implode a little bit because one of the players was like, "I just can't do the things I want to do," and it was like, "What are you talking about? Like, you're a wizard. You can pretty much do whatever you want. It just." Yeah, we're literally the most busted. Like, let's talk thing about how many times things. that you were like, "Oh, there's stuff over there." Fireball. Oh, look, there was stuff over there. Roll it for loot. Like, I don't understand what you want to be able to do. This that you door can't won't do. open. Like, if you can't do <laughs> you know it what? with a wizard, then fair, you can't do it. Okay? I, I stupid you, you wizard fail. put me in a situation where I got turned into a chest. That was dumb. And then I had like the existential experience where I'm just like. Does my, is my character aware that I'm a chest? Are my items still with me? If you open the chest, are the items that I was wearing inside? 
Like, how does that work? And the DM was like, it doesn't, would, it doesn't I would, matter. I would vote yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Like, so like, what chest, so chest be protected from How million? long am I going to be a chest? Will I be a chest forever? I would... I would like to testify that this existential crisis is real as I played a character that was an intelligent item for several months. And it, it almost, almost drove, drove her insane. insane. You insane? <laughs> I can see that. I feel deeply for Maybe. my characters, okay? I mean, And that's also, fair. I'm already a little crazy, so. I can understand that. I got really into character. One of the first games I played was Villains and Vigilantes, and I had... A character with telekinesis, telepathy, heightened charisma, but she became non-corporal. She couldn't touch anything. <laughs> wow, it was a it was a very convoluted role play to say the yeah, least. Yeah, I actually had like I was possessing the uh, the minor artifact of a demigod, and um, like one of my abilities was. I could possess anybody who was blood related to me, including my own body. So it was literally a staff walking around possessing my own body like a puppet. It was creepy. Okay, that's weird. That's a, that's fascinating. It was actually. hard to <laughs> RP. I'm not gonna lie, because you're just like. Ugh. I and then I was like, she should have just brought a puppet. <laughs> like it was just creepy. And then I would like be. I could tell like who I could possess in any given space. So I'd be like, I could possess you, I could possess you, I could possess you. But as a chaotic good character, I just, I felt dirty possessing my own body. Like, it was nasty. <laughs> like, no wonder. This was bizarre version That's of like, Oprah. we need some know, serious right? counseling Dr. up Phil. here. No. <laughs> so bridging in... <laughs> that would bring the ice Bridging cream. into... Bridging into Own Your Geek, uh, it's just kind of a continuation of our current topic, really. We're going to talk about what your favorite tabletop game is and what makes it good. Want to start us off, Loon? Chris? Sorry, wrong, wrong thing. Um, <laughs> I don't know if I have a favorite tabletop game. I'm a fairly noob uh, tabletop gamer. I've played Modern, and I've played Warhammer, and I've played D&D. That's pretty much it. Um, games, so I don't, yeah, yeah. So I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a pretty noob, a noob sauce at, at the whole tabletop thing. But um, just in, for tabletops in general, um, I think like, like uh, we were, we we mentioned this earlier. I think the best part of tabletop gaming is, you know, being able to be physically playing with a board and tokens and dice and rolling, you know, rolling the dice and things like that. And um, being in person with other people, hopefully friends, hopefully making friends. So I think that's the best top, best part cool. of tabletop gaming. And uh, let's go to our guest, Mander. What's what's your favorite, and what makes makes a tabletop game really good to you? My favorite is definitely Pathfinder. Um, I've I have the most experience with that system, but also I feel like it can in fact basically be whatever you want it to be and if you know it well enough you can build whatever character you want to play like anything that you could think up you can build um and my favorite thing honestly about tabletop gaming is just being able to kind of like i said before kind of relive that experience of being a kid and being able to just live in your own imagination and do it with all these people that you I mean, ostensibly, like, sometimes you don't like them all that much, but, you know, <laughs> you know, being able to create something together that means something to all of you and do it for years at a time. Hopefully. Hopefully it lasts that long. <laughs> it can, although <laughs> that's really hard on a GM. Sometimes you got to start over. <laughs> yeah. It can only be the apocalypse so many times. <laughs> Well, that, and it's like, well, don't you remember that a year and a half ago when we ran through the purple cave of blue diamonds, there was a thing where I clearly stated that I picked up the item and I was keeping it in my bag for later. I even wrote it down. So how can it be possible that now, and then you're just like, okay, seriously, dude, I'm sorry. That's just, I Avoid forgot. Eat your thing. <laughs> Move along. Yep. Yeah, there was, yep, there was some kind of a spirit yeah. that, that. You remember that time off. in the tavern where My you bad. died? No, yeah, because it happened just now. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jen, what's your favorite? I 
so I like games where I can be creative. Um, and I think that's always what has drawn me to White Wolf games. For example, they're dark, but there's also this uh, just such a rich tapestry to be able to to create a character. They're very system light. I mean, not everything has a you roll this and this automatically happens. Um, so I guess that kind of so storyteller type system works better for me. Um, I do really like that. I also just really like the dark horror aspect of it. I just like to, I guess, get my creepy, terrible, evil character on sometimes, apparently. Uh, I don't know what that says about me, but I still really enjoy it. <laughs> exactly. I really enjoy it. Um, but I, I, I also think it's also, for, for me, it's fun to take a situation and be like, okay, how can I get out of this? And, or how can I manipulate the situation? And I definitely enjoy the role play side of things a lot. I, you know, it's obviously, if I'm just going to go hit things, then I'm going to go play World of Warcraft and, and play a hunter and I'm going to shoot things for a while or go play Diablo and swing a big old sword for like a couple hours. Um, if I, but if I'm in a tabletop, I, I do really enjoy that, that kind of opportunity to role play and, um, and interact with other people. And like, I think like Amanda said, it's all about like creating that shared story. It's really cool. It reminds me a lot of when I used to make music with people and or jam with people in college. I agree. Like you're uh, all kind of working I together. I think White Wolf, I, I have to put on the, thing, on the top of the heap I, I don't know, I for really systems awesome. I like. I mean, back in the day when GURPS came out, I tried to talk any, everybody into GURPS because it has kind of the same appeal as, as Pathfinder and as White Wolf and you got well, not Pathfinder for this, for the dice being one kind, but for being able to take any kind of story you want and build it within one easy system, because the system shouldn't be telling the story. It just is letting you tell a story. And I, I love the way the White Wolf games work. Uh, I had an amazing, amazing GM for years. We played Made the Ascension, and I ascended. I mean, a game that was pretty intense. <laughs> that happened i broke the game <laughs> i mean <laughs> i've had games i've had <laughs> white wolf games where i have actually like had to take a minute and like like experience emotions and just be like okay yeah. i need to package I these a little vampire bit vampire for years holy and crap, there's a lot of like, emotional stuff in really those intense. stories um, um but the mage one yeah that's again even for white wolf top of the heat for me the way the magic works where you have the spheres and their correspondence or entropy or matter or life and as you get a skill in a sphere you are making up your spells you're explaining telling the story yourself to the gm i'm going to use entropy to that there's a gas main nearby and it's rusted out and it's gonna, you know, it's gonna give right now. And then I'm going to throw my Zippo over there. And like, you're casting a fireball, but you have to have a story to not, um, and, and you have to tell the story. Otherwise you suffer from paradox, uh, when you're witness doing magic. And it's just, it's brilliantly designed in, in my opinion. And of course, yeah, the, the GMs get all the credit in the world to me. I don't tend to run games very often, but they get full props for doing all that work <laughs> and bringing us into a world and, and helping, you know, and, and when they oh, let I us create the it building. with them, it makes the game better. Oh, I love it. I love tabletop gaming. It's so fun. If you've never done it before, go, go find a game or the, go on the internet and find a game to join. Cause it's, it's fun. It's go to your local shop. Time. Yeah, or go you to know, your local shop. So start you small. Can find if you're not you can confident, find nerds I mean, there, there's tabletops that have a little bit of uh, role playing, you know, in them, or can be a stepping stone. Um, but there'll be probably people hanging around playing them that will answer questions. <laughs> Even Mage uh, or Magic: The Gathering. I used to have a really bad attitude about it. It was like, what are you doing in my comic book store? In my game store, like all these kids with their obsession and they're trading their cards and there's all this money and, and I, I just, but they kept it alive and more and more it introduced people into other games. So I, 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 I approve. Hooray. <laughs> so girls, what are we most anticipating coming right up? Uh, Mandar, I know you wanted to tell us about a new Pathfinder thing that was announced. 
Oh, yeah. So Paizo announced that they are going to, um, in July 2017, I'm pretty sure it was July, um, they're going to be releasing their Starfinder, um, which is basically the Pathfinder setting in the Galarian world that they use in both the Pathfinder Society and in most of their adventure paths. But it's going to be like some X thousands of years in the future. Um, so a lot of the races that are less common will be more common. There will be alien races, and it basically um, takes place in the solar system around Galarian instead of on that planet itself, because apparently in this storyline, the gods have basically taken that place and did something with it. Ooh, right will... on. I like some sci-fi in my fantasy. Yeah. <laughs> so that'll be great. So, like, instead of um, everything taking place in the main city of Absalom, um, it will now be Absalom Station, and everybody, kind of, I guess there's, like, a gap of, of knowledge of history that's, like, a couple thousand years, where things that were living on Galarian, like, long-lived things like elves, they still remember living there, but they don't know how they came to be in space or what happened in the, the time in between like that history has been erased okay that's right. cool. it actually yeah, sounds really, really neat cool. i want to read about some of this going to go going to go to the googles next and start reading i have things. to tell my husband about that because <laughs> it sounds kind of like a lot of stuff he's been just trying to do in our D to us <laughs> that sounds fun uh so jen what are you in, most anticipating right so now? So I am really... Okay, so I read an article the other day, or I saw something on Facebook the other day about RuPaul's Drag Race All Stars Season 2, and I wasn't sure if it was real or not, and I did actually confirm yesterday that they are announcing that they're doing another RuPaul's Drag Race All Stars season, and I'm very excited because some of my favorite queens are going to be on the show again. Like, for example, Adore Delano, who I let sign my boob once. Alaska, who I high-fived once. Alyssa Edwards, who I've seen live but didn't get to meet. Um, Detox, she's just hilarious. And Katya, who was on season seven, re like or from one of the recent seasons, I loved her. And she's going to be on it. So I... I'm a total nerd, and I'm super, super excited that this is a real thing. Did you find a way to get I have logo not, yet? But now I have more motivation, so I don't know okay. when. I think I th it premieres at the end of August, so I have now two months to figure out how to get my hands on logo somehow while being a court. I player. will. <laughs> try to remember to look at that we will okay. we will find a way <laughs> it's our quest so yeah that's quest for the that's queens. what i'm excited about right now because right i did and see Lou? the list and i i what are you most anticipating I'm, coming yeah i'm very very excited. i am an, uh most anticipating coming up the um popper tournament that dills is hosting this weekend yes. on saturday did i forget what class you're playing priest i'm gonna priest. be priest my priest. favorite priest. class my my favorite yes. class. Yes, my favorite Priest class. Is the best class. <laughs> Priest and class. I like the format. Rhyme. I think it's going to be fun. Um, yes, super happy or super excited that it's a popper tournament, which comes from Magic: The Gathering. So we're playing with just basic and classic cards. No other sets. You know, like no other uh, Nax Ramus, anything like that. And that it's going to be a Swiss tournament, so that if you lose in the first round, you're not Hooray. kicked out. You, you still get to play. And I I really. It's the stuff I really enjoyed by drafting on Magic the Gathering online, so it'll be fun. And it looks like we're using the Battlefy system, which was really great for the last taco. Yes. So I think that that's going to be great. I'm excited. I'm going to build my to, deck. To I will hopefully get time to practice. Again. I really like and that then system. I'm a little scared I might have to bail out. Um, I do have to go to a funeral. And I don't, with this Swiss thing, you have I, I'm not sure how that works. Like, <laughs> I don't, I'm not out once I lose. I have to wait and see if I get to play again. <laughs> yeah, you will get to play again. We'll play, it, it'll probably be like a three hour tournament. Like, there'll probably be, uh, you know, an hour for each round, um, and then a half, 15 minutes between rounds, maybe. And then you play your second game, and then you play a total of maybe five games total. And then whoever has the best score after that, like five and oh. They're the and winner. I'm supposed to go to Salisbury Pride. I have images of myself in like the corner of the That's funeral right. and the corner of the bar with my phone movie. playing Hearthstone. <laughs> yeah. That'd be awesome. <laughs> like, somebody just texted me when it's my turn. 
Yes. Get it to the veins. So let's get our patron update from Jen. Ah, yes. So I do, sadly, I do not have any new patrons to announce. I'm oh, no. Sad. So oh. remember, pay, future patrons, you can join our no, our noble patrons and support us if you enjoy what we're doing um, at www.patreon.com slash grills. That's G-R-I-L-L-S. Also, uh, my friend is going to listen to this and make fun of me for saying the www part. I'm predicting it. Um, but anyway, <laughs> patreon.com slash grills. And we, we still do have some think, games yeah, up for grabs. For that's that. true. Yeah, we still are offering our next, our first five patrons are getting a copy of a uh, of a code or a game code, which we have listed on our website. And that's still available. So check geekgrills.com to see the list. And remember, your feedback, always welcome. So any of you patrons who... Um, if you would like to give us feedback on the goals or the rewards, let me know. If you're considering being a patron but you don't want to be because you don't like the goals or the rewards, share that feedback nicely so I can make changes and bring you on board so you can join our, our noble and esteemed legion of patrons. Yeah. Huzzah! Huzzah. And we love our patrons that we have already. All we love you all very much. So where can we find you on the interwebs? I can be found at N-I-N-E-O-F-1-2 on the Twitter. And I can be found at Chris Van Pelt on Twitter. That's K-R-I-S-V-A-N-P-E-L-T. I'm at uh, the Jen Says on Twitter. On Twitter. On Twitter. On, on, yeah, on Twitter. It's a new <laughs> social media site. Where you, yeah, it's Twitter. Twitter, <laughs> Twitter is, is coming. coming. Yeah. Um, so yes, I'm at the Jen Says on Twitter and I stream. I promise I am now settled into the new apartment. So there will be streaming at twitch.tv slash the Jen Place. So follow me there. Also, thank you to Mandar for joining us for our discussion today. Thank you guys. And, Absolutely. Um, we all appreciate you very I much. Did you want to share any assignment. contact info or? No, I'm a mysterious creature of internet. <laughs> Okay. Thanks again for joining <laughs> us, though. <laughs> really appreciate it. You're our first you guest. Our guest really Jerry. exciting. Do you feel special? <laughs> I do. Ah. I'm going to tell everybody now. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> now, please search for our Geek Grills page on Facebook, and we can be reached by using geekgrills at gmail.com or tweeting at geekgrills. We have a phone number. You can give us a ring and leave a message. Maybe we'll play it on our show. That number is 508-474-5577. That is 508-GRILLS-7. Leave us your feedback, suggestions for future episodes, and any other, you know, well, you can complain if you want to. If you use iTunes, please leave us a review there. Oh, Thanks game. for listening, everyone. Good game. Good game. Good game. Good game. GG. A father had two little sons, one of whom was an eternal optimist, while the other was a perpetual pessimist. One Christmas, he decided to try to temper both of their proclivities. In addition to their standard gifts, he told them they'd each get something chosen especially for you. His plan was to give the pessimist every toy and game he could possibly desire, while the optimist would be directed to the basement filled with manure. On Christmas, after the normal presents were opened, the father sent the optimist to the cellar while leading the pessimist to the room filled with presents. After the pessimist opened all his gifts, he turned to his father with a sad face and said, how can I possibly use all these? The TV will wear out, the Nintendo will get smashed, and all the other toys will be broken. After a few minutes of listening to such woe, the father remembered his optimistic son and ran to the basement steps. There in the basement was his other son, swimming through the manure with a gleeful smile. The father asked him why he was so happy, to which the boy exclaimed, with this much manure, there must be a pony in here somewhere. It's time for the Geek Grapevine. <laughs> Jen, you had some... Yeah, it was, yeah ding! That's ding. actually a good, that's, that's a good spot to know where to put the bumper. <laughs> Unintentional bumpers. Thank you, Facebook.